Hello and welcome to this edition of Indian Education Outlook. And today we are going to discuss higher education adapting to the new normal. Our guest here today is Dr. Sunil Rai, Vice Chancellor of UPES, a private university in Dehradun, Uttarakhand. And uh, the questions that we will broadly touch upon will revolve around how, because of this pandemic, universities are trying to adapt to the new reality. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Rai, and welcome to this webinar. And uh, I hope we have a really fruitful discussion ahead. Dr. Rai, let me start with you know a very uh, initial question, which is that you know in the face of this pandemic and you know the lockdown on the camp on campus education, what are the main challenges that you faced? Uh, good morning, uh, Ramadan. And uh, at the outset, I would like to express uh, my sincere thanks to the Outlook uh, for giving us this opportunity to express my views. Uh, to the question that you asked me, that the challenges which emerged as the pandemic broke were uh, three. One was to manage the emotions of uh, the entire commune, which is students, uh, our faculty and staff members, and uh, very importantly, the parents, uh, who are extremely important in managing this whole uh, ecosystem. The second one was to prepare ourselves uh, administratively and technically for the uh, new normal that we were confronted with. And the third was to how to adapt ourselves very quickly and start producing results. So towards the first one, uh, we had actually started connecting up well with our students in the first place. We have student clubs. Uh, we spoke to all the club members and conveyed to them that we are all with them and that they should just follow the good instructions issued by the government. Uh, we should all be safe. So we gave them the confidence formally, informally, through instructions, through dialogue. Uh, I sent mails to all the parents saying that we are with the, uh, everything is under control and we are at the top of it. So they need not worry, uh, except that they should take care uh, health wise of themselves and their families. Uh, we also communicated well with the regulators, both in center and uh, in the state to say that we are ready to manage this particular pandemic. So the first one was to manage the emotions of the ecosystem, which uh, I feel that we managed to do it pretty well. The, so without the uh, discussion, I will tell you some more details about this, uh, this part, which is very, very important of how do you manage the emotions. I think as a nation, we managed it pretty well as far as the uh, initial part of the lockdowns and all was concerned. The second one was that we were used to the face-to-face -face mode. We had, fortunately, the technology backup. We had invested uh, in a very expensive environment called Blackboard Collaborate, not just Blackboard, the Blackboard Collaborate, which is a very comprehensive environment, just, not just the LMS, but also it has got uh, excellent features uh, of uh, delivery of evaluations, of monitoring, and that too it was volumes. It can take up to 10,000 uh, students at one go. So uh, we were very fortunate that our uh, management had invested in this particular environment about two, three years back. However, the machinery was not well oiled, you know, because we were not practicing on it. So the, the, though the technology was there, but we had not actually applied ourselves to it. So what we did was in the first week, uh, when we got this news around 15th of uh, March, that things are now turning adverse, uh, by about 24th of March, in a 10 days time, we had actually practiced, uh, did some lessons and so on and so forth for our faculty, did some practice rounds with our student representatives and ensured that the faculty, the technology team, the students and we all get used to it and which is what we did. The third challenge was to ensure that uh, we deliver uh, all this curriculum on time. So we have, except for up to 24th of March, from then onwards, we have till the end of April, uh, we have achieved the complete schedule, which means whatever was declared in terms of timetable, every content was delivered online by 24th of April. So in one month's time, we did manage to deliver. We also conducted the regular exams. 
the class test, the continuous evaluation, and as a university, we geared up also for the final exam. So the third part of uh, there, of course, there were some technology challenges. More on the student side, they come from all over the country, so they had challenges uh, of bandwidth, of power outages, etc., etc. Of the family is not used to the things that you know my children, my ward is studying in the house. Uh, so, so we got this all behind us, and I think our performance. Uh, we may be one of the very, very few universities, and I can say it with a lot of confidence because I am a very close functionary with AIU, which is the Association of Indian Universities. We have very few universities who have completed their schedule on time, and we have also completed the exams for the graduating batch before 15th of May. And uh, we had declared the result, as we said, by end May, so that our students, the graduating students, do not suffer because of completion of curriculum as far as the jobs is concerned. Sir, but you know, when you say that you've completed it, all this was done online? Yes, please. Everything was done online. So what happened was on 614th, uh, we got our first, 16th, we got the instructions uh, from the government that we are supposed to close down the campus from the Uttarakhand right. government. Uh, so we uh, uh, got in touch with all our students. Uh, some of the students have not returned to campus because they were on a holy holiday. And uh, so we actually got in touch with them and said, please stay put in your uh, houses. Uh, we will take care of you from here. So actually 10 days went in, uh, you know, gearing up ourselves to that. I see. So, and what about, you know, the, the impact could also have been felt, let's say, on admissions and placements as well? Yes. So uh, I'll take the placement first because that's something which concerns our youth. So we ensured, as I mentioned, that we ensured that we complete their uh, curriculum, remedial classes, as well as final examinations for the graduating batch. We have 2,800 students from the graduating batch. Uh, for the 2,800 graduating batch, A, we completed the curriculum. B, we completed the remedial classes, tutorials for those who had difficulties. Uh, we completed the project uh, viva etc all that uh, which is the final year they do the dissertation uh, so we completed all that now the issue was of conducting the exams now the exam should be conducted they had to be online that was no option we were in the lockdown state the whole nation but it had to be in a doctored board it is only then that the industry will give value to our examinations and evaluations Though in Blackboard we can conduct exams, but we uh, still have another platform which is called the Metal. So on Metal we conducted the uh, online examination in a proctored environment, you know, where they have to have a webcam and the webcam records the whole student movement and so on and so forth uh, for our graduating students. Now the trouble came, as I mentioned, that some of our students uh, come from areas which are challenged in terms of bandwidth and challenged in terms of power outages. And therefore, right. also some of them did not have their laptops with them because they went for a holy holiday and they couldn't return to campus. So they had to take the ex examinations or these instructions on their mobile phones. So this metal software is not as friendly with Android systems as it is with the Microsoft systems. So therefore, some of the students had difficulty when they all approached us, so what we did was we gave them two options. We said, all those of you who can manage, please go ahead and we will conduct your exams online between 5th to 15th of May as was scheduled. For those who had difficulties uh, of uh, infrastructure, we said we will give you an option too. So whenever we are allowed to open the campus, you are welcome to come to campus and then you will have no problem of bandwidth. Uh, and then you please take the exam. You will also be given an exam in an online mode, in on metal, but on campus, so that you know there is an apple to apple comparison when the final grades are made. So, 90% uh, of our students of the graduating batch, uh, 2,600 of them almost chose to go for option number one, which is they wanted to take the exam on metal online from their house. Uh, the option number two was for about 400 students, uh, 300 to 400 students who. Uh, are now going to be given examinations in, in an online board. So uh, we ensured that the examination is completed. We completed the result uh, also, and also the results have been shared with the corporate. Uh, it pleases me to report to you that 30% uh, of our students who have got received the offers 
and almost all students have got offers from the corporate are already joined the corporate because we could conduct the final exams. So as far as placement was concerned, number one, we ensured that things happen as planned. Uh, I would like to put my appreciation to the corporate that they actually combined with us very well while conducting the final interviews online, other processes online, and so on and so forth. And industry, of course, is a better place in many respects to go through that exercise. So that was our placement. But the bigger challenge was the internships for the but one year graduating students, which is the third year students for engineering. Because at the end of third year, these students go for internships in the industry. Now, by then we were very clear the way the numbers were increasing that uh, we may have difficulty in getting to normal uh, before August, September, as the government has already been indicating. So uh, we didn't want that the students should lose these internships. Uh, one is schedule wise. And second is if they're not going for internships, these children, uh, you know, they, they will, of course, be feeling low. And uh, we didn't want them to go through all that. So we combined with the industry. And uh, here I will put again my appreciation to the industry. They agreed to conduct their internships online. 70% uh, of our industry partners uh, actually generated projects online for our students. The processes were done online and the internships online have already commenced. For the remaining 30%, they said, we agree with you for online, but we do not have uh, infrastructure wherewithal with us to develop an online internship. So then what we did, we came up uh, from inside, the faculty generated these projects and we sent those projects to our industry partners and then they accredited those products saying that, okay, these are good, uh, please you conduct and we will take them as our own. So they, those students also got registered. So um, initially I thought that we may be able to do about 1000 internships only, but uh, as we speak today, to 2,785 uh, online internships are already finalized and the students are already doing online internships. So I think as far as UPS is concerned, the placements, at least for this year, uh, have gone on as they should. Uh, so we did it online, we did it in some innovative ways as far as placements was concerned. And for admissions, obviously there were, uh, before the lockdown, we were, actually we had about 36% increase in our admission uh, application form sale. Uh, but as soon as this lockdown happened, as we speak today, that 36% has got reduced to about 20%. But still, there is a positive improvement as far as our applications is concerned. The students believe in us because they have seen our track record that if we could conduct entire syllabus online at a short notice, now that we have geared up ourselves, that we could conduct even evaluations, etc., and that we could even place and do internships. I think our admission processes are going on, so they are all going on online. We also created an app for students. So that these students can go through that app, they can do their FAQs, they can get their answers, they can connect to some faculty or staff in the university, they can connect to some alumni and seek their consulting as to which branch they should choose, whether to go for electrical or to go for electronics and so on and so forth. I think that the app is being, uh, the report with me is that the app has been very highly used and the student community has uh, actually appreciated that. We also created the online forum where I used to address the students and through uh, our media partners like you, I have been addressing webinars almost three to four a week, wherein students would log in and then we will give their uh, answer their queries and on me as an elder, it was for me to tell them that everything is okay, God is with us and things will be all right and these days will also pass soon. So I think on both accord of placements and admissions, uh, we have been very fortunate. The UPS has got a good track record. We take a very small break for a few seconds and I'll see you on the other side. Empowering girls in their journey from classroom to boardroom. Presenting 25% scholarship for all girls students. Log on to ubes.ac.in. Coming back to the exam part, you mentioned engineering and I believe engineering also requires a bit of actual hands-on lab work, if I'm not wrong. How did you sort of manage that? So very good uh, question that Ramanan. The For the engineering of the graduating batch, fortunately for us, all the lab work, etc. was over in the seventh semester. The eighth semester, the design is that most of the students or rather, rather almost all students go for the dissertation and self-study. Some uh -huh. of them are already with the corporate working on corporate projects. 
So mm -hmm. the question did not arise as far as the graduating batch was concerned. However, okay. for the non-graduating batch, where also we have completed the syllabus, all mm -hmm. theory portions completed. As far as practicals were concerned, we are resorting to two aspects. One is the virtualized uh, facilities that we have. Uh, the government of India through IIT Delhi has created a structure of something called virtual labs. That's you know, right. where through, through simulations, we are able to uh, administer these uh, lab projects and assignments, experimentation online. So if somebody has got a Microsoft platform, uh, then they can download this particular app and on that app, they can do the simulation. So it's possible for students to you know, work on electrical motors, generators, uh, even chemical uh, experiments, you know, when the simulation takes place, one gets a feel as if you are adding the two chemicals and the fumes are coming out and so on and so forth. However, there are still some practicals which just cannot be done through uh, virtual mode. Uh, we had a bigger challenge in our design department, you know, fashion design, interior space design. So we found yes. some innovative with the methods of, you know, using WhatsApp, uh, using other tools to, you know, co-work with them and, uh, you know, creating those designs and wherever they were, uh, patterns, wherever they were. Uh, so, so, and of course, we tried to support them. And I think uh, we have discovered that actually uh, in an online mode, we are able to actually cover more because there are a lot of uh, videos which are available like you want to demonstrate to somebody how to create a frog. Now there is a nice video which tells you about the various dimensions, the how the measurements are to be taken, how the cutting has to be done and so on and so forth. And after that there is a facilitator who explains things and then the students do in their own house and then they keep on showing their work progressively uh, through WhatsApp or uh, any other, you know, or even our software. So we could do these, but however, there are certain practicals which there will be difficulty and we are trying to find out. So we have decided that those practicals we are not using in the evaluation for this semester. When, as and when, God willing, the students are able to come on campus, we will devote uh, Sundays to complete those uh, practicals and then add them in the evaluation. But sir, isn't there a huge difference between the tactile experiment experience of a experiment in the lab and doing it virtually? Yes, yes. No, see, Rana, Ramanam, it is, it is uh, uh, very, very, it's, it's nice to believe in that. As I mentioned, the first thing I talked about was managing emotions. You know, when right. you asked me about uh, what was the major challenge. Now, this is a mindset issue, you know. What you said is an absolute standard mindset for all of us. Educators, students, family, society at large, industry. I mean, in this whole ecosystem, I think the better place people are industry because they are more used to these online way of working and simulations and so on and so forth. Now, uh, this is basically a mindset issue that these things cannot be done because going forward, uh, we will have to resort to these methods for two reasons. One, mobility may be a question with safety and security. Two, uh, the way the economics is going to turn out eventually in the, as a society and as the whole world, as a human race, we cannot afford to waste our resources, you know, whether these are chemicals or reagents or these are, you know, uh, other, you know, it, it, the most expensive uh, item in the education system is the labs themselves, you know. So when you create more and more labs, eventually it affects the, uh, the exchequer. So I think the, this has to become a way of life. And after all, I have been a sailor in my life. Uh, we are taught uh, everything uh, online simulations, and I'm talking about 1980s. Uh, we were to be taught gas turbines. Now, gas turbine was something extremely new to the nation at that point of time, and even for the Indian Navy, which was fairly advanced as far as uh, prime movers was concerned. So I remember then that we used to learn it on a simulator, which was uh, actually a scaled down model of the uh, turbine. Because mm -hmm. the turbine itself costs a fortune. And uh, as a trainee, I cannot afford to make mistakes on turbine. Uh, running turbine, if I do some mistake, uh, the turbine is so precise, it will go for a six. Now uh, we have got simulators which are totally online. Uh, we teach our navigation, which is entering harbor, leaving harbor, uh, through our uh, simulations. We actually do our war strategy planning using simulations, you know, where the enemy would be and how we will attack and so on and so forth. 
The right. pilots learn it on simulators. You know, the pilot never goes to the aircraft unless he is fully certified and cleared by the simulator, and then he goes and flies. Of course, there is a co-pilot. Uh, he goes and flies. So I think it's a mindset issue that so if a very complex thing like astronauts are trained uh, on simulators. So if all that can be done, why can't we this experimentation of connecting a motor and a generator uh, can happen online? So that field part, I agree with you, is something which is what uh, is a mindset change that we will have to do. And when people are talking of online dating and online marriages and so on and so forth, uh, I'm sure all these things will also get. Uh, so it's, I think it's a as a society we are moving towards that. Coming back to the university thing. Uh, Whenever the campus reopens, you're going to be again, you know, subject to a whole bunch of restrictions like social distancing and a few other things. What kind of steps have you taken to A, you know, uh, the logistical part of managing that part and B, what can you, what have you done to sort of convince parents that your campus is safe, parents and students? Yeah, so what we have done is uh, I have started going to campus. Uh, I go there uh, twice a week. Why I'm going there twice a week is basically not to put a load on my administration. Because when the vice chancellor comes, you know, some five, six people are troubled. So I don't want to trouble those people unnecessarily when the things are happening online. So what we have done is we have deep cleansed and the entire campus. You know, we have deep cleansed, cleansed it each and every hook and corner uh, of our campus one. Then we have done the sanitizations as per the uh, SOPs and the regulations which we have received from the state. So the entire campus has already been sanitized twice over by now. Third, we are also now preparing our uh, entry and exit points. We have also marked the area so that people can come in safely. They have to be checked, uh, thermal scanning, and then uh, sanitizing themselves. And then there are routes we have defined that these set of students you know, who belong to this program will follow this route so that they don't mingle with each other. Uh, all that has been done, markings have been made. Uh, then uh, the bathrooms have been also marked and prepared in the social distancing mode by blocking the uh, you know, facilities so that the people are at a distance. The classrooms have been also converted in the sense the seats have been marked where they cannot sit. So almost the capacity has come down to almost 60% uh, of our campus because in the social distancing mode. So preparation for all that has been done uh, as far as the physical part is concerned. Then the operation part, we have already come out with instructions that uh, you know the university will be operated in two shifts. Uh, some students will there, so they will come alternate days. So some students will come for four days this week and three days this week. The next next set next week we will swap. Those who came for four will come for three. Those who came for three will come for four days. So university is going to work seven days. The working hours have been increased from, uh, from instead of 9 to 4.30 to 8 to 5. And we have got staggering of timings. Even their students will come in a staggered mode. You know, so that uh, the lunch spaces, meal spaces, cafeterias are also ensured that we follow the social distancing norms. Uh, in every stage, we have kept the sanitization points. We have got instructions laid down everywhere, online as well as posters. As well as we have created a team of marshals we will keep going around and see that everybody is uh, ensuring that the things are happening the way the SOPs have been defined. Uh, we have also created, this, we are in the process of creating videos. So these videos also will be played. These videos actually we are going to send. Uh, they will be of course on the website soon in a 10 days time. We will also send them to the students and parents and the links also will be given so that they can see that the places, the hostels, the, uh, the working spaces, classrooms, laboratories, Everything has been uh, deep cleaned, sanitized, and prepared for that working in the social distancing norm with appropriate instructions. The food handlers, etc., also have been trained twice uh, to ensure that uh, they follow the, uh, so, uh, the social distancing norms. We have received an SOP fully from the Uttarakhand government, which is, has been uh, based on the instructions received from the union government. Uh, so we are prepared in terms of infrastructure, in terms of processes, we are conveying it through the online, through social media, uh, through the student clubs. And of course, we will have the marshals to ensure that uh, all these things are executed. We are also in touch with, I am going to address a few webinars to all the parents as I do. Uh, I, the last one I did was about three weeks back. So I will also be sharing with them uh, 
and in all this activity what we have done is we have involved our students so when i go to campus we have something called our student se student engagement uh, enterprise which basically uh, connects with all the students informally through me to convey what all we are doing so in fact a lot of suggestions came from there they said sir we could even use this particular corridor or sir we could use our uh, auditorium also as a classroom and things like that so we are doing all that so i think we have prepared ourselves from infrastructure side from procedure side and also communicated through social media and also through posters and following it up with marshals all this sounds like an immense logistical challenge in many ways i mean just just trying to put all this together and implementing it a apart from it being a you know logistical nightmare in many ways i'm sure it also imposes a, a certain cost on the university as well yeah it it does it does i think the industry is also doing it i think i was impressed the way i saw the videos on the tv uh, the way the mall owners uh, managers management is preparing the malls uh, which opened in delhi and other places i think they also followed those uh, in fact they got apps now to say as to how many people are already present in the mall so others will not be admitted uh yes it is a logistical challenge uh, but i think being a defense person uh, somehow it comes to us very naturally how to you know uh, quickly get into a mode of uh, managing logistics in adversaries so i think that uh, i can thank my training at the defense forces i will uh, also i would like to tell you my campus manager is a brigadier so i think it's a good army navy combination and the cmo is from the air force so we got the three integrated services here and uh, that possibly had our cmo the chief medical officer also comes from the air force so we have all combined well but uh, that was on the lighter side but the serious one is that uh, i think i have uh, to give it to my staff the admin team uh, particularly uh, including our outsourced partners i think they have combined very well uh, i appeal to them that friends we will have to work 30% more uh, in these change circumstances and the important thing that we have to do is to manage the emotions you know if we do find that there is a child god forbid to showing some signs of uh, covid or any other kind of illness so we have said this has to be handled in a very passionate manner compassionate manner as if we will do it for our own child or any case they are our children and the good news is that i think my entire staff and my admin team uh, takes it in that particular uh, spirit so it is a big logistical challenge and uh, this i think ramana this would to become a way of life going forward so i think as a society and through your medium i'm urging the all the parents and all the youngsters that i think this uh, you know the solutions cannot be found to all the problems but uh, we have a control on our own behavior so it, it it pains me to see how people crowd around despite the government appealing for social distances and so on and so forth you all in the media keep uh, telling people that please don't do it i think we have to understand how to keep safe ourselves if we follow the very good principles principles of personal hygiene which actually our elders taught us uh, we will be safe and therefore i think and also cut down on unnecessary activities of unnecessary movements uh, unnecessarily going around here and there uh, enjoyment doesn't come only when you hang out you know uh, as you were saying about how can you simulate experiments the youngsters will ask me so how can we simulate hanging out i mean you can simulate it it's not a problem you can always simulate you go take a corner of your room and think the name it shimla and then go there and enjoy yourself for some time and say i want to shimla and come back you know so something like this we will have to work out the whole society has to change up so what i'm hearing is that the campus as we used to know it is gone forever and we better learn to get used to it and adapt Yeah, so physically yes i agree with you physically yes i mean it could not be that you know you will find people crowding around at any places sitting close to each other uh, as youngsters do and why not they should i think they will have to take care of that you know so mm -hmm. the life will have to be but this is going to happen even for uh, our day to day life now today we when we walk out i go with my wife for a walk uh, we keep telling each other don't touch this don't touch that when we come home we go and uh, wash ourselves uh, sanitize hands and uh, the newspaper comes we don't take it for up to lunch and you know so all these things have to become habits so yes life will not be the same 
but it doesn't take away anything from us enjoying the niceties that the god and the uh, you know nature has provided to us just that we will have to modify the way we consume those uh -huh. but sir you know you were talking about the logistical challenge one part of it was of course to make students sort of adapt to it you know learning from home and online classes what about the teachers i mean don't they also need to be trained in how to administer online classes and things like that yes so uh, we we did that as i told you that uh, we took about 10 days to set it down fully which is when what we did was we categorized teachers into three a who were absolutely comfortable on going online b who were comfortable with online but did not know the tricks of how to make online interesting and c was those who had difficulties in uh, uh, you know conducting online classes and you will appreciate these are inversely proportional to the age the youngsters are of course very nicely they quickly adapt to the online modes uh, fortunately we got a lot of young teachers my problem became reduced in that sense so i had about 60% of my faculty who were almost ready to go uh, so what we did was we did a three days training for them and then it was training was more in terms of telling them how the time tabling will be done how scheduling would be done how they would monitor their classes attendance this time so it was basically training in the works rather than training in conducting classes uh, then for the remaining 30% we had to do some uh, just hand holding for about a week where they knew how to do online classes but you know how do you uh, change your own mindset feeling that okay the student is not in front of me then how do i ensure that he or she is listening to me you know so uh, that was basically of a mindset issue than the real issue so we but these are issues so we actually did that second part of training which was in trying to make them comfortable with online mode and the 10% were those were who actually had kind of aversion you know they want the chalk in their hand and the blackboard in front and all that uh, we appreciate that those are people of my age and beyond you know so the, of course i have been trained by technology so i didn't have any of those problems fortunately so we actually did a little longer training for them now this is what we did at that point of time now after that after we have completed the syllabus and examinations now we are going through a regular mode a we have taken it as a as a, a policy decision that even if things become absolutely normal 30% of our curriculum we will deliver online so like for example if there are two sections section a is face to face section b will be streamed on some days and we will reverse some day b and then a is streamed so that you know the machinery remains well oiled that should the requirement come up we could be doing online we take a very small break for a few seconds and i'll see you on the other side empowering girls in their journey from classroom to boardroom presenting 25% scholarship for all girls students log on to ubes.ac.in but sir a lot of students who were planning to study abroad are now being forced to reconsider because of various issues like you know restrictions on travel and not being able to attend campus are indian universities ready to pick up that slack yeah so what is happening is that uh, i think unfortunately our western uh, counterparts are hit uh, as of now as of today uh, more seriously than what we are in this part of the world except for a few pockets of maharashtra gujarat and tamil nadu uh, the rest of the nation uh, the government is also allowing movement so i think we are not in that bad a situation as yet and god bless it be so and it should improve and we should get the vaccine by september october as the case may be but i think since the way uh, things have happened in the west the universities they have already declared that the first year they will do it online uh, some of the universities have already approached us uh, some of them are our regular partners Uh, have already approached us that can we do uh, the part of their syllabus here with us for their students who they admit so while they will do most of the things online for their admitted students their practicals and some other uh, aspects can be done with us to which i think there are about eight nine universities which have approached us and we are uh, now uh, if at today itself at 130 i am having a meeting with some of our uk partners uh, as to how do we uh, plan Uh, joint work so i think this kind of collaborations are going to happen uh, europe and us are already way ahead they have already planned uh, as far as this thing is concerned 
Now, as far as the experience is concerned, so what will happen is that they will be taught by their faculty from uh, those countries, online mode. Uh, they will, they may be here for, with us, but they will again still be under the control and care of our foreign partners. Uh, as a bonus, we will also learn as to what do they do actually with the students. So you know, uh, and they will also see as to how do we manage. There will be a uh, cross fertilization of ideas and things like that. I think it's not that everything that they do is better than what we do here. There are things that we have actually figured out uh, as a society, as an educating bodies. So I think these kind of collaborations will happen. Mm -hmm. So which brings us to, you know, what you were mentioned earlier, which is that, you know, you were talking about how the education policy needs to change in many ways. And one of the things that I was hearing, for instance, is that there is a request that uh, labs could be shared, for instance. For instance, a student who, let's say, lives in Delhi and you know is a student of yours, instead of having to come all the way to Dehradun to use your lab, he could easily, you know, use a shared lab at some other facility nearby. And of course, there's a lot of other expectations. What would be your sort of expectations from the new education policy, which is yet to be sort of you know, what kind of uh, changes do yeah. you see there? You see, the education policy, uh, fortunately, always had that provision, you know, where you could share labs. Because I had been in touch with the uh, chairman AICT, Dr. Sahas Bode. He comes from Pune, and we used to exchange our notes. Uh, and of course, as I told you, I'm an active functionary in AIU, Association of Indian Universities, where we have this dialogue on a regular basis. So uh, this sharing uh, was never stopped. It is just that I think the accrediting bodies, uh, you know, who certify us, the NACs and the NBAs and all that. Uh, I was, of course, on the board of NBA for three years. Uh, I think we need to understand that the sharing of these resources has to become a norm and due credit has to be given to either party, which means suppose if I'm using your lab, credit has to be given to you that I'm using your lab and nothing should be taken away from me that I don't have a lab. You know? So okay. what should happen is that, okay, between me and Raman, and what we can do is he creates a strong media lab, you know, and I create a strong technology lab. So whenever mm -hmm. these uh, uh, learners who are learning media, when they want to learn technology of media can come to me. And when they want to learn the other, uh, you know, the business of media and the procedures of media go to your lab. So something like this should be done so that we do not repeat the uh, facilities because as a nation, uh, we can ill afford to waste that luxury, uh, waste those resources. So I think these specialty labs should be created and those should be used. I think the pharma companies uh, fortunately use it pretty well. Uh, the uh, culture and the formulations etc. can take place anywhere and then they bring it to there. So I think this is the kind of thing which has to happen. Uh, what would need is now that they should, uh, the, the, what is coming in the way is the accrediting bodies not understanding or having not provisions, they understand. See, for example, if I don't have a lab, they will not give me that grade. Uh -huh. And therefore, I will create a lab. And I will also double infrastructure. At one point of time, at AICT, we used to count the number of computers. Right. And for the next five years, they kept on giving B grade to those people who did not have a computer lab. It is ridiculous uh -huh. today because the whole world is a computer lab. A student has got a laptop or has got a tab. Wherever he or she is, he is connected. And a single sign-on with cloud and with this virtual mode, you are connected to us anytime. So why should physically I have a you know hundred by hundred area where I should put a queue of uh, uh, you know these uh, computers? Yeah, so most of these computers were dummies which were kept there. So that none of the inspectors come and feel good that, oh, they have got lab, uh, lab mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. I think those kind of sense has to come in. So even the, those kind of changes have to happen. This is happening. So this I've talked about infrastructure. The same thing happens about uh, the faculty resources. You see, let's say, if, uh, so please don't mind, I give example and take names like this. You know, that's how teachers do. So for example, Raman is an expert in uh, new media. All right, uh -huh. and I have got a course of new media. Why in the world should I again hire a faculty on new media? So when since Ramanand is there, he can be my adjunct faculty, or he can come and engage his classes. Or if I have got a larger volume, I can send the whole class to him at the end of the semester to learn. So even the faculty resources, these knowledge resources are very uh, important. You know, it takes about 20, 25 years for someone to be called a guru in the field of area of expertization. 
Now, how can we have so many groups when there is a resource constraint? So I think uh, in the regulation uh, regulations already, the provisions are there. Now the beauty would be in execution and particularly on the inspecting bodies and the, regular, the accrediting bodies. I think uh, they have to have uh, the sense the way it is there elsewhere in West, for example. Now, uh, in the accreditations which are there in the West, I'm not criticizing because I was part of accreditations myself. We have already moved towards outcome-based education. Uh, the uh, government and the educators are moving ahead. I think the only thing is it has to be much faster. And uh, it, we cannot take 10 or 15 or 20 years as the other part of the world could. We have to do it in the next two years' time. So I think we have to change this. It's a, it's a teamwork. The regulators, the educators, the students, and the society at large. And all of us have to understand that no resource should be duplicated as far as possible. Uh, there are ways of understanding quality. Uh, other than also input based, it has to be an outcome based uh, assessment. So it's, it's, it's not that I have to have a car to learn driving. You know, I can always find that resource. I don't have to own an aircraft to fly. Similarly, I think this uh, analogy has to be brought in education. And I'm sure the way I'm getting indications, uh, the thought in Delhi is moving in that direction. Uh -huh. I mean, I, from, from what I'm hearing from you has given me a lot of you know confidence that I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you're not the only one who's sort of thinking so so forward ahead, thinking ahead at how this whole thing has changed. And I'm sure a lot of other universities will also try to you know pick up from what you've just said. But there is also a concern that you know what what people call the social divide that you know technology is all very good and fine, but what happens to the students who can't afford it? Would you agree that there is that gap between the two, two kinds of things? The poorer universities, for instance, where students come from far simply because they don't have access to technology at home. What happens to them? I think that has, is uh, changing quite a bit. I just again use another analogy to talk about. So the other day in one of the uh, webinars, I was questioned this about, you know, Whatever you are talking, professor, these things can be managed in the big cities, you know, the metros and the big cities. If you talk of Cal or Bombay or Chennai, there the entire infrastructure is available in terms of bandwidth, in terms of power and all that. Uh, and also the mindset somebody talked about. I said uh, today, so I said that my reading is that uh, we have got some romantic view of uh, our villages and our, uh, you know, which, which is 70% of the nation. Now, if uh, somebody goes to the villages today, you will find Netflix there. You will find uh, the inter internet there. There are routers. And thanks to the infra telecom infrastructure, let's give it to them that today uh, in a village, the mobile density may be more than what you find in the cities. I do not have a data, but I'm going to give you a good uh, one to check. You know, per capita wise, there may be more mobiles in villages than they are in cities. Uh, uh -huh. Also, in another interesting statistics I will share that you and me may have maximum two mobiles. You know, my maid servant has got three mobiles. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so, and this is the case with most of the people I find. You know, so therefore, this I go to the Sabjiwala. He has his mobile. He is doing Paytm. He talks about sir, Paytm karo, Google karo. I think the uh, today the situation is not that. Um, I find branded stuff being consumed in villages, Wranglers and Levi's and so so the, that old Rajkapoor days concept of you know Thoti and the village on the bullock cart. And I think there are more motorcycles per capita in villages than there are in the cities. So I don't uh -huh. think that there is a kind of a divide for the reasons of infrastructure. And even for that matter of uh, understanding, uh, I think the, the case in point is that if you pick up any kind of an exam, uh, you pick up toppers, they come from smaller towns, then they are coming from metros. Uh, pick up a record of last 15 years. 95% mm -hmm. toppers come from small towns. Uh, this one would feel that the resources are not there, whether it's IAS topper, topper or UPSC topper. Uh, so uh, I think this divide is more perhaps uh, in our perceptions than it really is. Though, of course, there will be, there are issues, but I don't think today's uh, world is 
devoid of uh, infrastructure like that yes now about sharing what you mentioned is a good way of uh, ensuring that uh, experience wise there is no social divide what i am saying is of course there are institutions which have already arrived uh, and there are institutions which are in the process of developing there should be a good mentor mentee kind of a partnership uh, which iits and iims follow you know whenever a government creates a new iit since i am ex iit and myself so i know about it is that uh, i think guwahati till today is mentored by iit bombay you know right. and like this uh, so, uh, i am so i am ahmedabad mentors i am jaipur and you know other places uh, things like that so i think this consortium kind of an approach of ensuring that all of us grow and which is where it brings me to the point that the accrediting bodies have to have to change their way the way accredited you know so that there is quite possible that somebody may not have that lab yet may be producing a better result as far as outcome is concerned his child may be topping his child may be becoming a good scientist his child may be uh, you know a good technologist or a good administrator and so on and so forth so i i, I mean one of my old teachers at school used to say everybody born in ayodhya is not ram and from the same logic everybody born in lanka is not ram <laughs> so somebody who comes from that kind of an infrastructure need not be having the excellence guarantee so i think this social divide is more of a perception and uh, we as a society have to work against it it does exist as far as infrastructure is concerned to an extent but that gap has narrowed down what it was 10 years back and what it is today uh -huh. you know uh, our conversation so far has left me incredibly reassured that our education system is in very very good hands I, earlier i used to have this notion that you know we have <laughs> trying to sort of trying to cope with the change and you know it's been yeah. really very reassuring you know if you were to sort of uh, tell a student or, or advise a student as to why he would want he or she would want to come to ups you know if you could give a couple of points as to why why what makes ups different from other let's say universities around i mean from what i have heard from you i would join ups at a, at a pinch any time but you know if you were to talk to a student uh, what would you tell them sure uh, ups would love to have a student like ram anyway so uh, having said that uh, yeah as a, i would i would like to think it so that uh, i based my things totally on what i have learned from my elders and i am very proud of the fact that i am born in india you know which is a land of gurus uh, we have very rich philosophy uh, the whole world acknowledges it now and last few months have also proven proven it further i leave aside some stray incidences here and there those will continue uh, but it is the majority which actually proves the point is that basically uh, honestly and truthfully we have to converse with our youngsters because these are the leaders of tomorrow they are the ones uh, who are taking our nation further i keep telling whenever i meet a youngster i uh, he tells me good morning sir i also tell him good morning sir then he one day one uh, girl came and asked hey, you sir you said good morning madam so i said yes i i talk to you with a lot of respect for a simple reason that you are going to be the citizens of the nation which will be number one nation in the world so when you come up to a level in 2030s and 40s india will be the number one economy in the world i was a citizen I, when i was growing i was of a third world developing nation you know in 60s the india was a third world developing nation so i said that's the reason children i respect you a lot because aap log to you are going to be the citizens of a nation mm -hmm. today itself we are taken seriously we are invited in g8 by america you know china is for whatever incidents is happening cannot come out in the open he knows that today is india is a very different nation we are already the fourth largest economy and uh, projections were that we will become the largest economy by 2045 the way things are moving uh, my understanding tells me it may be much earlier so now the future holds a lot of uh, uh, promise as far as these youngsters is concerned however there is one caveat to it the industrial society will not remain in the same mode as it is today for example we may not have regular jobs tomorrow you know this complete thing that i join a company the, these may be project based or these may be item based even uh, i mean just to take your example it's quite possible i don't know if it already happens in media 
some work is given, you complete that particular article, give it to us and get paid for it. Or you go and do this kind of covering. Uh, again, so you're not on our roles. You know, you are totally on a project on an assignment basis. I think more and more things will happen in that order, which means we are now moving up from regular employment to a project-based entrepreneurial employment. And that can only happen when you as an individual is prepared for it. So it is not to find a job. It is basically to prove yourself to the world that you have it in you. That means these students who should join UPA should be the one who are willing to take on that kind of situation, which we call it VUCA and all that in uh, our jargon terms, you know, volatile, uncertain, confused and all that. So that is was used to be a management or a stylish jargon has become a reality today. You know, there's far more confusion, nothing is certain whether we can start the university on 1st of August or not, we don't know. We may, we may not, we just don't know. What kind of jobs, what kind of, so for example, the uh, automobile industry, for example, somebody will have to think that if you are only thinking of just the passenger cars or the luxury and the segmenting it into luxury and non-luxury, segment A, segment B, segment C, you may not be in the business. Because a car for tomorrow may not be just the mode of transportation. It should be converting itself into operation theater very soon. It can become a media studio. I mean, there is uh, the, the car itself transforms into a media studio and Ramanand is sitting there in his car and I'm sitting in my car and we are having this conversation. And it has got all these sides so that Amit doesn't have a problem of adjusting lights and this and that. You know, mm -hmm. so there will be a car which will be professional ready, you know, a car for a writer, a car for a doctor, a car, something like that. You know, so these are the kind of things which the, I am expecting the world will change. And for this changing world, you need a person who is A, confident of himself or herself. You know, I mean, what happened, unfortunately, in media, uh, in the film uh, last two, three days, I was very touched by that. So whenever we lose a youngster, it hurts me and it pains me. And because we as elders at our stage are looking up to these people, you know, to take our nation forward. So somebody should join UPS who is looking for becoming a learner for life, who is going to not ask for jobs, who is going to create opportunities, who is the one who will not buckle, whatever happens. It's only one Corona today, there may be 30 tomorrow. You know, there is one China creating problem for us, there may be some more. Right? So it is, uh, we have not buckled as a nation. You know, right for thousands of years, there had been Chinggis Khans and Mughals, there were aggressions on this nation, right from Alexander days. But our forefathers didn't buckle. We are as a nation. So I think somebody who joins UPS should be a personality who believes in himself or herself, who believes in the rich value system, and uh, God has given this mind uh, enough strength and have that courage. So your education will not be of technology or law or of uh, uh, you know media and we are management, what we have, all these. But we will prepare you for life. You will learn yourself. We will only be facilitators. We are not going to be the teachers. So if you are ready to take on the world, please join us, is what I'm going to tell people who want to join you. On that extremely positive, encouraging, and forward-looking note, I'm afraid we must conclude this session because we have run out of time. That was Dr. Sunil Rai, Vice Chancellor of UPES University, talking to us about how institutes of higher education are gearing up for the new reality. Thank you so much, Dr. Rai, and I look forward to hosting you again on an episode of Indian Education Outlook. Thank you very much. Thanks to, thanks to you, Ramanan. Thanks to Outlook.